guess what everybody you're watching the political vigilante my name is graham elwood make sure you're subscribing i've been stuck at 90 i've been saying this for weeks i've been stuck at 9700 subscribers it's no way is that possible spread the word share the videos and help out on patreon i stopped the my amazon affiliate link so i lost that revenue stream and then youtube has been throttling my numbers so my youtube money's down a little bit could definitely use your help on the patreon guys cancel your cable come join me and if there's anything on the patreon that i'm not like you're like hey graham why don't you add this tier i'm open to suggestions email me let me know info at grahamelwood.com or if you're already a patreon subscriber and you're like hey i'd up my pledge if you did this this or this i'm all ears i'm open to all different kinds of ideas guys it's just me and my part-time producer so um I don't know if you know this, but the Department of Justice has been investigating the Royal Bank of Scotland for practices that they did during the 2008 financial crash. Here's what they're finding in the investigation the reports. Emails of RBS bankers joking about crashing the housing market before 2008. This was in the Hill.com. Employees at the Royal Bank of Scotland joked about crippling the U.S. housing market before the 2008 financial crisis, according to transcripts released by the Department of Justice last week. What a bunch of dicks. According to transcripts, the banking system began to reveal flaws in October 2007. The chief credit officer wrote to co-workers that loans were being pushed by every possible style of scumbag saying it was like quasi-organized crime. So we've talked a lot about this because I'm one of the 5.2 million people that lost their home to foreclosure in the United States. I did that, uh, I think it was March of 2008. No, March of 2010. I started um, fall of 2008 when the crash hit, and then I started a 16-month battle. I had hired lawyers. I had all this crap happen to me. It was unbelievable, man. Um, um, Indie Mac had my mortgage. When the crash first hit in September 2008, Bush put a bunch of stimulus money out there. And I had never been late on a mortgage payment, but I was paying later and later every month. And I was like, I had really good credit. I had really good credit. And I was like, as long as I'm not more than 30 days late, it won't affect my credit. I was paying on the 10th of the month and the 15th and the 20th. And I was like, God, oh, man, I got to just. And a bunch of work dried up. I was hosting game shows. They didn't, no one was considering me a game show or they only want, the game shows had gone away and all, all that was happening was reality TV. And I was petitioning, you know, like not petitioning, but going to agents and managers saying, hey, I'm a comedian, man, sitcoms, movies. Nope, we just view you as a host. I didn't want to do reality TV. It was awful. And then when the recession hit, stand up comedy dried up a little bit. Uh, in every November, December office, you know, companies do Christmas parties and I would make a fair amount of money as a stand-up comic and one night you can make what you make in a, in a week or even a month. So those were big. Those all dried up after the recession and I was like scrambling to, to stay afloat. And I was trying to rent my, I finally rented my condo and got someone in there and moved into a cheap apartment. But the... Indie Mac, I called them and they said, you know, if you, this was like November. And they said, if you fall, I was borrowing money to stay, I was doing all this stuff. It was difficult. And they said, if you fall actually now with that Bush passed this plan, this is November. If you fall more than 30 days late, we have all these plans to help you. So just the guy on the phone said, just wait, be 31 days late, 32 days late with your payment. And then we have these plans. So I waited a week, I did that, and they said, we're gonna put you on a forbearance, which is they cut my mortgage payment in half, and they said, we're gonna do that for three months. In that three month time, we're gonna restructure your loan to get you a lower monthly payment. I said, if you just get me a lower monthly payment, I'm good, I just started renting it out. So now, the rent I was making was really good, and it could pay for the mortgage, and most of my rent on my apartment, I'm like, awesome. I go, I'm not looking for a free ride, just restructure the loan. Because, of course, all these bankers are like, yeah, we can refinance and get you money and it's all good. You know, they sold me on all this crap. 
which some people are like, you should have known better. Really? I'm not a finance guy. If my auto mechanic, if I bring my car in and my brakes are squeaking and my mechanic says, nah, you're good. Okay, and then my brakes fail and I crash. I mean, ultimately it is my fault, but a, a person that knows way more than I do gave me advice and I said, okay, sounds good to me, I don't know. I have a film degree. There's a reason they don't teach uh, money management in public schools. So after that three months of forbearance, they came back and said, oh, you don't qualify. So now you've been making half payments for three months. So now you owe us this giant amount of money. And the money, it was a different, it was like, oh, you, I'd get a piece of paper saying, oh, it's 10 grand. I'd go to the website and say 12. I'd call them on the phone. They'd say 11. They didn't know night from day. I found out later One West Bank bought my mortgage for 30% of its value and said, oh, it's better if we get this guy out of his home. Obama came into the office, did the same thing, stimulus plan, oh, we're saved, same thing. Three month forbearance, bring your pay. I was like, okay, okay, this will be great. Same thing after three months, no. Did it to me one more time, then I hired lawyers. Lawyers told me to stop making payments. And once you get close to foreclosure, nobody wants to foreclose, the judges will make sure, they'll make a plan. I said, great. The whole system screwed me and Obama let it happen. And meanwhile, while this was happening, these assholes were laughing about it. The release of the email and call transcripts were part of the DOG report, which resulted from a 4.9 billion settlement with RBS. In its report, the DOJ accused RBS of making false and misleading representations to sell more residential, -backed, <coughs> residential mortgage backed securities to investors. The Justice Department added that executives showed little regard for their misconduct and internally made light of it. Okay, $4.9 billion settlement. Okay, nobody went to jail. Obama didn't put anybody in jail. He could have. He could have put them all in jail. He could have had sweep, sweeping regulation. No, but they own. <clears throat> Obama had what? 10, 11, Citigroup, and Goldman Sachs people on his cabinet. Goldman Sachs has been in every presidential cabinet since Reagan. The system's broken, man. <clears throat> so you get big black chunks of nothing. Thanks for watching The Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood.